We all know that automation is key in running a business today, but have you ever thought about incorporating it into your marketing strategy? Hello, sunshine, and welcome back to the Gold Biz Podcast with me, your host, Rachel Traxler. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about marketing automation ideas. So how can we use automation in our marketing strategy while still staying integrity with our brand and our communication and our experience. This is a fun episode. I'm going to tell you some ways that you can do that. But before we dive into anything, I want to make sure that you are entered in this month's podcast giveaway. All you have to do is leave a review and you will be entered in this month's giveaway. We do new giveaways every single month and you can enter as many times as you want. Using automation in your marketing strategy helps to just eliminate that back and forth manual tasks and using a system like a CRM can really help you implement these tasks. And not only is this going to help you organize your back end, it's going to help you create a client experience that you're confident in knowing that each of your clients are getting without question every single time without taking up more of your precious time while you are serving them and loving them as well. And that, my friends, is on working smarter, not harder. That way you can work less and serve more, which is all about what I'm all about around here. So a key to automating your marketing is figuring out which tasks feel repetitive to you. And then you can take them off of your real-time task list. So let's dive into it. Here are some ways that I think that you can automate your marketing strategy. Number one is with lead capture. So take away from that back and forth communication and avoid those missed messages from people. Make sure that all of your funnels lead to inquiry or contact forms so that you can capture leads without you even having to do anything. And I know most of us photographers have a contact form um, and have them hooked up to HoneyBooks or CRMs, whatever you use. But if you don't, This is a really good way to automate that lead capturing to take off of your hands. And a question that I get asked a lot from my students is, should I have multiple contact forms for different types of sessions? So say that you do weddings, but you also do families. Should I have two separate types of contact forms for that? My opinion is there's no right or wrong answer, but I think the simpler and easier it is to just get in contact with you, collect their name and information, get them into your world, the higher your inquiry rate is going to be. So if you can just have one inquiry contact form, then you can differ and funnel people after that, after they fill it out. And I think that it's nice so that people aren't filling out the wrong form too. And I say this because I've had multiple forms in the past. I have trialed and erred and I have failed and tested all sorts of things. And I've had multiple forms in the past where people end up filling out the wrong one. And then what happens is I don't get that correct information that I need from them. So having one really efficient and solid inquiry or contact form, then you can choose to put them in the appropriate workflow or funnel on the back end after that. And the second way to automate your marketing is having auto responders. And I know that these can be annoying. I totally know. But hear me out. They are going to have immediate responses. People will get immediate responses from you. And you can create this response however you want. You can create and have links, resources, guidance, direction from you on more things they can view, how they can get in contact with you, what your preferred form of communication is, your office hours, your response time, all of those things. And this is just another form of setting boundaries and expectations from the start So although they might be annoying, they're really good. They're a really good thing to automate, in my personal opinion, into your marketing so that when done efficiently, they could answer some questions that don't require your real-time attention because they've already answered. You've already taken the time to build that out to answer their questions before you even have to answer them. But it's also going to funnel people down funnels that they may have missed otherwise. Maybe you want to make sure that they're on your email list and they that they get this freebie that you have to offer, but they haven't seen it. You can include that resource in an automated autoresponder. There's so many different ways that you can make sure people are funneled in so that it's creating a more solid marketing funnel for you by having autoresponders on. 
I know they can be annoying, but I honestly think they're a good thing. And then the next thing to automate in your marketing is event reminders. So within your CRM, like HoneyBook and Calendly or Airtable or whatever you use, create event reminders for their scheduled events with you, like phone calls or sessions or anything like that. And you can even go into that specific event and write out instructions of links they need, your phone number, where they can join, what to expect, what questions you're going to go over, how long it's going to be, whatever information they're going to need to know. That way they can show up as prepared as possible for their session or for their call with you that they probably will have very little questions and you can just use that time, utilize that time to really connect with them because you have taken the time to nurture and educate them leading up to the event. That way they just come in knowing what to expect, knowing what to do. That's going to take a lot of real-time tasks off of your plate too of people asking questions of how do I join? Where do I join? Are you going to be calling me? Where do we meet? All of those things. It's just going to really help not only having event reminders, but getting very specific with all of that information in there as well. And then moving on, the next one is client onboarding sequences. So having not only your entire workflow automated, which I think you should do, but especially your onboarding. And I know that a little more customization goes into that onboarding phase of your workflow, but the best you can have these parts automated, the less work it's going to be on you in that real time upfront time that you're spending. Put yourself in your client shoes. They just booked their photographer. They're probably booking other vendors. What do they want to know and what do they need to know at this specific time in the process and in the workflow with you? You don't want them to have buyer's remorse, but you also don't want to overwhelm them as well. So providing them the right information at the right time is very, very important during this phase. Schedule your workflow to be automated that triggered after certain things happen. For example, they choose their package and then you send them the contract and invoice for that package. Once they sign and pay that, their automation is then triggered. Once that automation is triggered, they're going to get that welcome email. And then maybe the next day, they're going to get their engagement session scheduling email. And then the day after that, they're going to get their engagement session prep email along with a questionnaire for them to fill out. Then they get funneled into the nurture sequence phase of the workflow. But all of those things come before that nurture phase of the workflow. You need to make sure you're providing them the right information, that you are not letting them have buyer's remorse, but you're not giving them information that they're going to need down the road. You're only giving them the things that they need at this point in the process for you. And that's just an example too. But when you can automate those things, it takes away that back and forth that you don't have to spend as much time scheduling and emailing back and forth of, When should I have a session? What times are we going to do? What locations are we going to do? What vibe are you going for? What time of day works best for you? What location? If you can automate that in your workflow, that's going to take up, take away so much back and forth email for you. And it's just going to help automate some things as well. And then moving on, that leads right into the next phase that we were talking about was the nurture sequences. And that is a part of the nurture phase of my workflow method that I've created. I like to call it the nurture phase. Your entire nurture phase should be automated so that you don't even have to think twice or attempt to remember where everyone is at in their client journey with you. This is going to give an awesome client experience while putting some automation into your marketing as well. Because what that does is, moving on to the next one here, is upsell campaigns. And this is a perfect follow-up and from the nurture phase because a student recently asked me about how she can feel not so salesy on a phone call talking about upsells and a la cartes and add-on options and all those things. And my answer to that was, you shouldn't even be talking about those things during the phone call portion of your workflow. I think your nurture phase is the best place to be presenting and speaking to and bringing up and putting that idea in their world about your add-ons and about your upsells. Not in the booking phase, not on the phone call, in your nurture phase. Because these are things that maybe they're thinking about adding on later. And these are things also that should be automated into your workflow that you could be creating more income 
by upselling at any time without even realizing you're doing it in real-time marketing. You've already set that up, one and done, set it in your nurture phase, and you don't have to do that in-person talking and feeling uncomfortable with things. You can just open up and expand their minds on what other offers you have to offer to elevate their experience with you. You don't have to feel salesy about it. You can just take your current clients and create them into ideal premium clients by adding on those add-on services or upsells or add-on offers or whatever you want to think about adding them on. So then that way, all you're doing is elevating their experience with you. You're not selling. And when you can think about it that way and present it in that way and do it at that time, I think it's just going to feel a lot more natural. It's going to feel a lot better on your end. And your clients are probably going to resonate with it more too because that's just where they're at mentally in their process with you. And then the last one is gathering testimonials. I think getting reviews and testimonials are a crucial part of your marketing. And this is something that could be absolutely automated within your workflow. And newsflash, I say this all the time, spoiler alert, it doesn't have to always just be at the very end of your time together. I actually recently just got the kindest review from someone after our engagement session because we had a really good onboarding experience and we hit it off right off the bat and we had a really fun time at our engagement session. So I shifted my automation and emailing and asking for testimonials to be after the engagement session. It was a really, really good time because she was talking about how much fun she had at the engagement session. She talked about the booking and the onboarding experience for her and how awesome it was and how it was so easy and seamless. And that is such a good thing to talk about because people reading reviews are also in that same exact spot in their process with looking for photographers and looking for which photographer to invest in and choose. So it gives that extra social proof around not having buyer's remorse and how good that process was because they are so closely in that process themselves. So they want to put themselves in that mindset. So having testimonials that not only are just about the whole experience in general, like an overall experience, but about specific times and about specific things with working for you. And I think that onboarding process and that booking process and that whole that very beginning onboarding phase is really, really powerful to have. But you shouldn't have to manually ask for these reviews and testimonials and can have that automated in your workflow. And having really good testimonials and reviews is amazing for your marketing. So that is something that should be automated in your workflow. And Listen, I'm all for automating as much as you can in your business to save you some time so that you can work less and put then more energy into other areas of your business. But let's not forget that we are service-based providers and real humans who need to value connecting with others as well, especially as photographers. We are such a connection-driven service that we really need to make sure that we are valuing that as well. So the magic, the true magic happens when you can automate without making people feel like you're automating. And there is a magical balance between the two. So when you can start with automating these things that we talked about here, I think you can start implementing and you can also start getting more time back so that you can focus on other things such as lead generation and bringing more people into your world. But the more clear and solid you can have your marketing funnels, the better it's going to feel when you do start to focus on lead generation. You're going to start for, uh, you're going to start marketing and funneling people into your world, but you know that you're bringing people in on a really solid funnel. So I think that that's really important. But I really hope you loved this episode and it was helpful for you. So if you loved this episode, make sure to screenshot it and share it to your story so I can see which episodes you're loving the most and then also share the love in return. But thank you so much for tuning in today's episode. I appreciate you so much. And as always, keep shining and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.